When you turned 50 years old just a few years ago, you took it as a moment to think about what do I want to accomplish mm -hmm. with the rest of my life? And you landed on women and girls. You are a mother of three, two teenage girls. How personal of a decision was that for you? It was about how do I want to change the world? How do I want to leave things when I'm gone? And if you really believe, as I do, that women and girls transform societies, I have to do this work. I want to do this work. And I think when I first got into global health, first of all, we didn't even hardly talk about women. We certainly didn't talk about girls in global health. But secondly, it was kind of also for me like, oh, that's the soft issue. And what I've come to learn huh. through doing this work is no, it's the hardcore issue. It's the thing we have to solve if you want to increase the GDP around the world, if you want to transform society. So, so why make the case, right? Because I was stunned to learn that um, there are more women living in poverty than men around the world. And by the way, that's true in the United States. Yeah. And so that's why we actually say poverty is sexist. There are absolutely more women in vulnerable situations. Here's a perfect example. If a woman's educated, her child is twice as likely to make it to his or her fifth birthday. To live. To live. Why is it that more women are trapped in poverty, even in the United States? Than men. Well, in the United States, it has to do with a lot of single motherhood. There are many women who are single-headed households and struggling to make ends meet. We probably need to have some different policy decisions that focus on women to do the right things. We actually have a, a poverty commission that's um, up and running now with the Urban Institute. And the whole idea is to create a public good where we can look at poverty mobility. You travel the world, mm -hmm. obviously, with the work that you do, especially in the developing world. And one thing that stuck with me is that you've said you have to let your heart break. To really affect change, you have to let mm. your heart break. Mm. When has your heart broken? Oh, so many times. Um, I guess one of the most recent ones that is a reminder is, you know, I had a woman in India who asked me to take her child home with me. And she didn't know who I was, she just knew I was from the U.S., but she was literally begging me to take her child home. And then she said to me, well, if you, if you can't take this one, take that one. She didn't even know me. And I thought, for a mom to do that, right, it tells a you how child. desperate it is that she would give up a child. And um, that's heartbreaking. So what has this journey mm -hmm. over the past few years been like for you as a mother, not as the Melinda Gates that the world knows, but as a mother in your household, what have your girls said to you about it? Well, it's interesting. Uh, my oldest daughter, who's now 20, I think when I was younger, she didn't understand why I worked because she said, but you don't have to, Mom. And I said, yes, but there are things I believe in and there are things that I want to step out and use my voice in and make sure the foundation does. And it's really interesting, as she's older, she says, I completely get it now. I get why you work. And, and she says, I want to be a working mom one day. Absolutely, a mom and a working mom. So to that point, um, one of the biggest issues that society and the world is trying to tackle when it comes to, true, frankly, true equality for women is, is the unpaid work that we do as women. The so-called, as economists say, the second shift or time poverty. Mm -hmm. um, coming home from our jobs mm -hmm. and having way more work at home than men do. What is the gap? So worldwide, if you look at the gap, it's different in different countries. But in the United States, it's 90 minutes a day more that women do of unpaid work. So we need to make it more okay for men to actually take time off. We also know the dad is more likely to be involved long term if he's taken some time off at the beginning. So we have to make it okay for men and women to take that time off. When Bill um, was still working at Microsoft as CEO and our, young, our oldest daughter now, but she was only four then, was going to preschool, I was driving her at first and then he started to drive her some. And all of a sudden there was this kind of a scuttlebutt in the classroom amongst the moms. And I said, well, what's going on? And they said, we're all going home and telling our husbands, if Bill Gates, the CEO, <laughs> can drive his kids, so can you. <laughs> and so we were role modeling for other families. And sure enough, more dads started showing up at school. And it was great. You said it's not enough to reduce, because if you just reduce, then they'll figure out other work will come up. And if you don't distribute that, you're always going to be stuck with more as the woman. Exactly. Exactly. So you've got to do all three. You've got to recognize, you've got to reduce, and you've got to redistribute. And I've actually seen some very courageous families, just like our own or your own, have those conversations even in Africa where the woman will stand up and say, you know, it's not okay that I'm the only one doing this particular part of the work. Have you ever had that conversation with Bill? Absolutely. The conversation about, you know, 
who's going to do what. Or when he left um, Microsoft to start working at the foundation, it freed me up to travel more. But it meant that if I was traveling, I wanted somebody home for dinner more, right? So we constantly, literally every week, we look at our calendar, we look two weeks ahead to see who's home for dinner, either both of us or which one of us. And I've asked him to give up meetings to be home at night, to be home with dinner for the kids. And I think that's really important. Paid leave. Mm. Uh, we are at a moment in this country where we've never been before. Both the Democrat and the Republican running for president both want government paid leave. Uh, for Hillary Clinton, it's family leave. It's paternity and maternity. For Donald Trump, it's just maternity. How big of a step is it, though, that we're even having this conversation? Well, it's a necessary step. To me, it's a step we should have taken 20 years ago. But I am so glad that in this uh, particular time, we're finally saying to ourselves, OK, it's not whether we should have it. It's going to be how should we have it. And so should it be family leave? What form should it be in? How are we going to cover it? How are we going to pay for it? There are great policies around the world. Many other countries have already instituted this. So oh, we're I'm, way behind. We are so far behind. So I'm just glad that it's finally we're going to do it, and then it will become after the election, how do we do it? OK, so what do these policies need to be when they take shape? whoever the next president is. They need to be family leave so that you don't gender it so it just becomes, okay, women take it and it's almost a penalty that they've had a child and they go take it and they don't come back to the workforce in the same way. So some of the things we need to do is make sure that it's for both parents, mm -hmm. that it's several months, it's paid, and that we also um, incent the men to take it. It needs to become okay for men to take it. And that means men actually taking it and showing that they've taken it. So Mark Zuckerberg taking right. two months off at the time that his daughter was born was a fantastic thing. It was great role modeling. It's also Silicon Valley where that is frankly much more widely accepted than Wall Street, for example. Mm. Um, do we need to see the heads of the big Wall Street banks doing the same thing? Yeah, I think we absolutely do. We know that if people go and take leave, they're happier and they're, they stay at their company longer. So they're less likely to switch industries. So I think if you know that it's good for your bottom line and that you'll have a, an employee who's going to be there long term, that you've spent all this money training and getting them to be great in your job, then yeah, it helps the bottom line.